so just tell us about this upcoming fight, how excited you are and how you've been training. Oh, uh, this is a fight for the 154 uh, WBA pound title. I'm very excited. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Uh, I'm blessed. And I can't wait to go out there and once again make history. What made you want to go up in weight classes? Is that just your constant drive to like achieve more and more? Well, uh, you could say a little bit of that, but at the same time, I just think my body is growing. I'm getting older. Uh, making 147 was kind of tough, so uh, it's, it was time for me to move up. What's been the most challenging thing about moving up that weight class? Uh, I don't know yet. You know, I, I haven't fought in the division yet, so I really don't know the challenges. I don't know how my body's going to feel. I don't know how things are going to go, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. What does it mean to see Omaha show out for you today? Oh, it means a lot because I always rep my city. I always support Omaha and for Omaha to support me like I support Omaha is one of Turkey Ali, Ali, Ali Sheik, if I'm not mis I'm pronouncing it correctly, is very pursuing that fight. I know you're not looking ahead, but you know the Canelo fight possibly in February. Is that something that in the back of your mind that, that, that you will take no matter what, even going up in, uh, two more weight classes? Well, my mind is, is crystal clear on one thing, and mm -hmm. that's August second, and that's Israel Magical. I'm not thinking about worried about Canelo or mm -hmm. anyone else for that matter. Uh, August third is the only fight that's in the back of my mind and in the front of my mind, side of my mind. So uh, yeah, that answers your question. What's something about your opponent's fighting style that you respect that you've been kind of training for and you're hoping to like, I guess, neutralize would be the word when you when you go up against them. Well, just everything about him. You know, he's a decorated amateur. He got a lot of experience in the amateur uh, field. Uh, he may only have 11 fights, but he's 11 fights in the world champion for a reason. So he's a strong guy. I got to respect everything about him. You know, just like I got to respect everything about any other opponent that I've been in the ring with. Because everybody brings something different uh, to the game. Um, I know you were talking about the, the uh, 147 becoming undisputed, that rematch for Crop of uh, Spence. Did it just fall off immediately, or was it just everything that was happening with the promotions with, with PBC? I really don't know. I wasn't in contact with anybody that uh, talked about the fight. Uh, we had a rematch clause for the fight. It never came to fruition, so we just moved on. And I know... Um, that he's going up to him before as well, more than likely probably cross paths again. Have you possibly thought about that as well? Like I said, the only thing on my mind is August 3rd. I'm not thinking about any other opponent or any other fight for that matter. I know how special this, this gym here is for you and for this community. And so there's probably a bunch of your kids out here um, just out here to support you. What does it mean to see more kids from the community that maybe don't go to this gym coming out here to support you? How do you take your role as a role model and you want to inspire them still. Oh man, it's, it's, it's wonderful. You know, I love to see the, uh, the community come together for a positive event and show their support and come out here and ha just have fun, just mingle with other kids and other people. Uh, that's what it's all about at the end of the day. How about having Logan Paul out here? What does that support mean and how'd you guys link up initially? Oh, uh, Logan Paul, that was dope, you know, for him to come out actually, you know, mingle with my community, being that he's not from here, and uh, Omaha is not a big city for, for boxing, for him to come out and show the support that he does, uh, it, it tells, you know, uh, the level of uh, respect he has for me, but not only that, uh, he's one of my sponsors. Hey Terrence, those wrestling moves, I, I know you can help yourself, but, you know, you know Showed it in the wrestling ring as well, you know, not to mess with you. Uh, what was that experience like to be able to knock someone out in the in the WWE? Oh man, it was dope. It was dope. You know, it was a, a dream come true for uh, a little kid watching WWF. You know, like I I told him, I was just like, man, it's it's crazy for a kid to grow up watching, you know, Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior, and all these big uh, giant figures in the uh, wrestling Federation, well, WWE now, uh, and for you to actually idolize them as a, as a little kid, for you to grow up 
to actually be part of the, the show is, 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 is dope. It was a blessing. You jumped on the turn buckle and kind of like, when you dropped them, you stepped over them. Is that the first thing you're like, I got to jump up and kind of yeah, tap my yeah, chest? Yeah, and... yeah, yeah. I was just like, man, I got to live in the moment, man. I got to enjoy it because at the end of the day, man, we all didn't have those times where we rehearsed ourselves jumping up the turnbuckle or hitting somebody with a clothesline and you know just just the craziest things that wrestlers do that i'm pretty sure we all emulated those moves and things like that and uh for for me when when the time came i was like man i gotta jump on the ropes i gotta jump on the ropes so could you see yourself possibly, possibly doing something like that? We've seen, we've seen a lot of fighters, you know, being in WWE, maybe later down in the career, you know, we saw Floyd doing it. Obviously, uh, was, and I'm small, man. <laughs> you know, we've we seen Floyd do a uh, partial, you know, two, 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 two shows. Uh, I think he did two shows, but for the most part, you know, those dudes, it's just like any other sports. They go through a lot of injuries. It's, it's very tough on your body. And, and uh, I commend them because, you know, we all say uh, wrestling is fake, but at the same time, you can't fake a fall. Some of them, some of them injuries that they be having is, is, is real injuries. When you've been in a sport for a long time, I mean, if you get paid for it, obviously it's like your job. But how important is it for you to still find the joy and the fun in boxing? Oh man, just being competitive, being competitive, and just wanting what you want. You know. Uh, I've always been a, 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 a competitive person in any and everything that I ever done, and just continue to stay on top and uh, keep trying to conquer the world. Have yeah. you have you ever thought about being at ringside after you retire, commentating and giving a blow by blow because you are the best at it? So have you ever thought about doing that? No, uh, I never really uh, thought about being and commentating or any of things like that. I, I'm more so like a, a gym guy, gym rat, you know, helping the, the fighters in the gym, helping the fighters, you know, uh, get through the things that they need to get through to be able to sit at the table and talk about boxing after boxing. Now, Terrence, uh, I've seen you spar super middleweights, but you got to spar Andre Ward. I mean, you don't have to give details. I know you guys are competitive, but what was that sparring like on, um, you know, fight fans want to know, just it two goals. It was dope. It was dope. Man, I appreciate Drake for even, you know, giving me the opportunity to step in the ring with him. You know, um, I can say that, you know, I spar Andre Ward. That's, that's, that's dope, you know. So, you know, uh, it was good sparring. It was very, uh, a very good experience for me. Take, I'm gonna take it to the to the grave. What kind of insight did it give you? Obviously, just a little bit. Like, what did he tell you? Like, you don't stop. We don't stop learning, right? You know, right. Again, we never stop learning. What did he tell you? That I like, just briefly something that could that during your sparring session. Uh, pretty, not, not too much, not too much. You know, what I mean, the sparrings. You know, like we we've sat down and talked about things outside of sparring, but uh, I think once. You know, we got in the ring, he was so locked in. I was so locked in, like there was nothing really to say. We both locked in and we both focused on the, the task at hand. Does it give you extra confidence that, you know, your goal is to move up continuous and weight that you are rumbling with Andre Ward and I'm sure Andre kind of looked at you like, you, you were strong, strong ass Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, me and Dre, man, you know, we, we work, but at the same time, different styles different different fighters i never try to compete uh compare any style or any fighter to a, another style or another uh, fighter now you fight with madrimal he's you know a tough guy you're moving up weight he's been at 154 his career you know 200 plus amateur fights a lot of times people look at your resume and they say hey these are names but you made those guys look easy but the guys like you know, Mean Machine and Victor Post is a lot more technical. Is this Madrimal fight a more technical fight that the fight fans may not know the name, but this could be possibly one of your toughest fights on paper? It could be. You know, like I said uh, in the past, every fight could be my toughest fight. I don't know until I step foot in the ring. You know, uh, Israel is definitely a, a, 
a tough opponent. Uh, we definitely not taking them lightly. We never, you know, took any shortcuts on this fight. And, uh, we shall see. We'll do two more. What's your message to young kids in Omaha that want to be like you one day? Uh, I just tell them to dream big and, you know, keep working hard and, and keep studying and listening to uh, the people that's in their life that want the best for them. And uh, just go get it. Just go get it. You know, because I was a kid from Omaha, Nebraska, where boxing wasn't big. There was no champions. There was no uh, big role models to look up to. And I had a, a dream. I had a mission. I had a goal. And I just went out there and then, conquered it like anybody else would in any other city. So I would just tell them, you know, if you drink big, you just, you know, you head to the sky and just keep working hard for it. Hey, hey Terrence, um, with, you know, Floyd, Dre, and you, Shakur seemed to go through what many greats go through. Criticism with people that may not know the sport as well as you guys. Any kind of words of encouragement or maybe information that can enlighten the boxing fans who don't really understand what they're probably critiquing on the Shakur fight? Well, Shakur is one of the best boxers in the game, if not the best boxer, pure boxer, you know? So I just tell Shakur, just continue doing what you're doing. Don't worry about the negative uh, attention that you're getting. Don't worry about the uh, backlash that you're getting from beating the guy convincingly. Uh, everybody's not a knockout puncher. Everybody's not gonna go in there and knock every one of their opponents out as uh, long as you win in, in, in a fashion where there's no uh, confusion who the winner is then you're doing something right just keep winning